Want to show support for your Philly teams? Check out phillygoat.com. They have all of your needs covered, whether it's Sixers, Flyers, Eagles, Phillies, Union, Philly Boxing, Philly Culture, Philly Pride. There's something for you. They have tees, hoodies, hats, any color, any size you want, including kids. Go to phillygoat.com and use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. That's phillygoat.com. Be sure your shirt has the authentic goat on the sleeve and use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. That's phillygoat.com. What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for the Philly Season Preview. Weren't expecting that one, were you? Well, if you've been listening and paying attention for the past couple weeks, I've been teasing the Philly Season Preview, and I said there was a big announcement coming for the podcast, and I'm officially announcing right now that Back to the Future is officially retired. Now, let me give you some of the thought process and background for that. And I've been, I mentioned the end of last year, it was starting to get to be a lot doing two podcasts, having two kids, working a full time job, as well as keeping the ideas fresh. And more importantly, that's where I, I was struggling with because there started to be a lot of overlap. I noticed it when we did the, uh, the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets. Then there were some things on Herb McGee that started to overlap. And it just really became more of, running two like I wasn't putting my full into back to the future anymore Um, and as I was thinking of that because I wanted to save some of the things for this day in Philly sports history but then I needed to have content for back to the future and it just I wasn't able to fully realize the potential of either one because I was focused so much on two and I thought about doing back to the future as the special uh, as I interviewed Brian Michael with a legal part And then the more I thought about that, there are a lot of overlaps, but then it's also two separate audiences. And I feel like doing this day in Philly sports history really is able, I'm able to combine my passion from history as well as Philly sports. I'm a former history teacher. uh, So it just made sense. So over the past like six months or so, I've been toying with it. And you probably noticed that this day in Philly sports history, the episodes have started to get longer. I'm doing more of the current state of the team, and it's not a super long format, but it's longer than what I started. I started off, it was under 10 minutes, and now we're anywhere between 12 and 30 minutes each day, and I, and I think you, some of you might disagree, and that's fine, but thank you for listening, uh, but I think it, it allows me to just kind of get all of that out there at one time and really just focus on it and get things together now since it's being retired back to the future archives there's a lot of good stuff there a lot of stuff that i'm very proud of a lot of stuff that i i stand by and i think is good stuff and you can see really if you start at the beginning and follow the progression through just my growth as a podcaster and being comfortable in front of the camera on the mic however you're getting this so the archives are still going to be available on youtube that's part of why everything I've done over the past couple of months has been very calculated, which is why I went through that whole month where I was pumping up, trying to get the YouTube count up because I knew Back to the Future was going away. But all of the videos of the podcast are still there. So Jimbo underscore Mont, subscribe. You get access to everything uh, on YouTube. The podcast version will be shutting down. Uh, and what that's going to do is... It's a lot of the stuff on the back end with the algorithm and things like that. But it's going to allow to have a singular focus on this day in Philly sports history. So everything now that I do will be under this day in Philly sports history. Whether it's an interview, the the season preview. I I want to try to set up a roundtable for the draft coming up. All of that stuff is going to be under this day in Philly sports history. A lot of my research and everything I've looked at is trying to grow things and make it, you need to have that singular focus. So focusing everything on this day in Philly sports history is going to allow me to do that. So what about the name Back to the Future? I I really still love the name and I love the concept of the original one. It's just sort of morphed into this day in Philly sports history as I became more comfortable, got better at it, and was able to really put out a product each day. The name is not going anywhere. 
this podcast is still going to be this day in Philly sports history, but I've been toying and, and trying to roll out the, the voice and text line, 267-495-8531. Been waiting and thinking of a name. Thank you for everyone who submitted some, some ideas for that. But the Back to the Future name is going to now be attached to the voice and text line. So you're still getting some of that. It's the Back to the Future voice and text line. It sounds wonky and whatever to say right now. That's okay. We might tweak it. But call and give your thoughts on the Back to the Future voice and text line. 267-495-8531 gets you in. Back to the Future voice and text line with a PH. So we'll see how it goes. But again... The main focus and the big idea behind this was to allow me to, to really have that singular focus, put all of my energy and efforts into this, all of my uh, the, the algorithm things and all of the, the marketing opportunities and everything I have into one place and not sending people here for this, here for this. And now it's going to be one-stop shop. This day in Philly sports history, back to the future voice and text line. Follow that. Because there will be a quiz. Anyway, as I mentioned, this is the Phillies preview. And the Phillies season is starting. Uh, I purposely was waiting till this week and this day. It just was making sure all of the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed before I officially made this switch over. Uh, I probably will not get rid of Back to the Future, the podcast version on Apple and Spotify and all the other places until next week when I have spring break and I have time to really do some cleanup and things like that. But this is the back to the or the this day in Philly sports history Philly season preview. So with all of that being said, hopefully we're gonna have a better. The day I recorded last year was the day that Reese Hoskins blew out his name. So hopefully, knock on wood, I didn't hear of anything bad today. Before I start it, so hopefully we're off to a better start than what we were then. Uh, but just a quick recap from last year. Phillies made it to the NLCS. They were up three games to two, had games six and seven at home. We all thought that we were winning, that we were going back to the World Series. And honestly, it wasn't all that different than the, the World Series against Houston because ultimately they forgot how to hit and couldn't do what they needed to do. Uh, but if you remember last year, they got off to a sluggish start, uh, injuries and just different things. And they were 25 and 30 in April and May. Bryce did come back early in May from his injury, but it took him a while to get acclimated. He was only dh in. Ranger Suarez was off to a slow start. Tawan Walker, despite racking up the wins, was not very sharp. Trey Turner, coming off the World Baseball Classic, got off to a slow start. Then they got hot in June, and then they pretty much were guaranteed they would be in the playoffs by the end of August. They wanted to get that home field, and they were focused. And by the time everything started clicking for them, they were so far behind the Braves, it didn't matter what they were going to do. They beat the Marlins in two in the wild card, uh, beat the Braves in four in the NLDS, and then we just talked about what happened with the D-backs. So what does that all mean for this year? And I, I've been kind of teasing a lot of what I'm going to talk about tonight on back to or this day in Philly sports history. Sorry, I'm, I got to get out of the habit. I'm used to it being dark outside when I when I record this day in Philly sports history. So bear with me. It's going to all make sense eventually. Um, but I, I think the biggest the thing that sticks out the biggest or the most to me coming into this season is they're healthy. Like before you take anything out of the way, they're coming in healthy. Bryce is ready. I mean, his back's a little sore right now. It doesn't seem like it's anything other than just being older. I mean, when I turned 30, things started to hurt that didn't hurt me. And I think part of it's precautionary. And of course, I didn't play at a high professional level as Bryce does. So I think we'll be okay as the season goes. Uh, but he will have a full season. He's already made the adjustment to first base, so he's been working on that. The transition is going to be there. Ranger Suarez is healthy. Uh, you have Trey Turner, comfortable, not coming off the World Baseball Classic. Uh, and there's not really many questions surrounding this team. They have a very solid top to bottom 
I mean, yes, they could be better here or there at certain positions, but <clears throat> they have a, a solid core and they have the experience and, and they've won. I think you can't undersell that, the fact that they've won and they haven't gotten over the hump. So they've had the taste of it and they're hungry. And I think that is going to be a major, major story as we go through this season because they've not been able to win the division, but they've been in a playoff race. They've had to chase down the wild card spot two years ago and then got hot. They knew what it took. You saw it once everybody got back last year. They were one of the better teams in the league, and they they knew what to do. They, they knew when to push it, knew when to back off. Uh, Rob Thompson was able to set up his rotation going into the playoffs, so everything sort of worked out, and that just comes with the experience. So now – they know what they, they needs what needs to be done. So what we're going to do is just kind of break down position by position uh, and then just take a look at some intangibles. I'll give you some of my bold predictions that I don't necessarily think will be that bold per se. Um, and then ultimately what our pick is going to be for the season. Obviously, JT is a, real, uh, a year older, and so that could be a question mark. Um, I don't know if that means we're going to see Stubbs a little bit more this year to make sure Real Muto gets some rest. Maybe he'll do some DHing. Um, so we'll see. But, I mean, he's still one of the best to do it. He proved that time in and time out last year. Uh, he was more streaky last year, but I, I still think catching catcher-wise we're fine. Uh, and Stubbs has been doing fairly well so far in spring training. So I, obviously it's a drop-off. But I don't think it's like if you remember when it was Darren Dalton, then Todd Pratt, or even Chooch down to um, whether it was Chris Coast or uh, who's the other guy? Isn't Coast the guy that was? I think it's Coast was the guy that was a 30 year old rookie or whatever. Um, but I don't think you're going to see like it's not going to be a liability because it seems like Stubbs has been getting better. You got Bryce at first. And again, I think having the offseason, one, he's coming in healthy. Two, he, he's got the mindset, okay, now I'm going to be the first baseman. And I know you had the, the contract or the extension thing. I don't foresee that being a, an, an issue at all. Um, I don't think Bryce is that kind of guy. I mean, does he want more money? Absolutely. But I don't think he's going to come in and pout or do anything like that. Uh, I'm looking for Bryson Stott to to have his breakout year this year. And it, I was borderline. I only wanted to keep it at three. But this would this would have been my fourth uh, bold prediction. Bryson Stott's going to be an all-star at second base this year. I just have a feeling like he's solid in the field. And I think he's ready to take that next leap now. Uh, the first year, he, he was kind of platooning here and there. Didn't have a set spot till later in the season. You saw what he did having a, a set position and knowing where he was going to hit last year. Uh, I just look for him to really have a breakout year. And I think it's going to be key with the way this lineup is for, for him to really get it going. But I look for him to be an all-star this year. Uh, that would have been my fourth bowl prediction. Uh, but Bryson Stott, I'm looking for big things out of. Another person I'm looking for big things out of this year is Alec Bohm. I think this is, uh, with the way his contract is and uh, arbitration and things like that, he needs to have that year. Um, and I think, again, knowing that he's not going to have to play first base often, he's going to be the regular third base. There was just, so, like, if you really think back, and, and I keep going back to this, and I, I can't understand because you look at what happened with the Eagles and how when things started spiraling out of control, that things got out of control. But I think Bohm was at first base sometimes, then he was at third, and then he was DH. And then you didn't necessarily know where he wanted to play or where he was going to play until Bryce was healthy. He's our third baseman now. And I think that coming in and, and being more comfortable with that and knowing, I look for him to, to have his best year as a pro this year. Trey Turner, again, I want to see Trey Turner from the standing ovation until the end of the season, Trey Turner. And I think we're going to see that. I would not be the least bit surprised if uh, he steals 30 bases again. 
Uh, he's never done it in his career, but this is not necessarily a bold prediction or anything more than be pretty cool to see him go 30 for 30. Uh, I know that's asking a lot. I think his previous high, I think he had 26 last year, and then he had 28 one year in Atlanta or, or in L.A., but uh, could go 30 for 30. I think this lineup's going to be potent because they're not going to have the – I mean, he had 26 last year with – having that big slump so i mean i guess it is fully possible uh and then you have march in left field which i really i hopefully he's going to come back healthy he seems like he is i i think he's one of those guys that he's streaky but what you can get out of him is great he's more your defensive guy uh castellanos in right uh I, hopefully he just has uh Speaking of streaky, uh, they do have a ton of streaky hitters, and I'll get into that in a minute. But Castellanos was an all-star last year. I, I, I don't see any reason why he won't continue to to hit well. Uh, you have Schwarber at DH. Hopefully with him playing DH and not have to worry about the field, you'll take away. Maybe he can get started earlier in the season than June. Um, I, I know a lot of people talk about him hitting leadoff, but I mean – I don't get the point of that because it really is he hits leadoff one time guaranteed a game. And then after that, it doesn't matter. Anybody can hit anywhere depending on where the lineup rolls over. So uh, I think if he get him an extra at bat, I mean, he hits 40 home runs a year. If he has an extra, that's what? Figure maybe you can say 100 at bats maybe. Maybe that's a lot. Maybe that's more. 50 60 extra whatever it is get him the extra at bats by hitting him first I, I don't have an issue with it the first question mark though is center field with johan rojas and i i don't know where to go with this i was very bullish you guys know i mean he did put on the weight i mean he he looks jacked he has that believe shirt from philly goat and he looked jack in it but he has, it hasn't translated yet, and it's going to come down, and I was hoping something would get announced today before I record it, but I think it's going to come down to, to what they feel. And I know the other day when Dombrowski was on the morning show for WIP, he said sometimes you want to take them down to AAA and get them consistent at bats, but there's such a drop-off from Major League to AAA that – Sometimes it might be better to let him play through it. He, what he does defensively is not going to to matter. And honestly, if the rest of the lineup is doing what they should be doing, your number nine hitter, it shouldn't matter if he's hitting 200, 210, 190. I mean, it, it just it, it won't. And I mean, that means if you get a higher average out of Schwarber, Maybe that'll help offset it, but what Rojas brings to the defensive side is is huge. And how they decide to go with that, I don't know. And then that's going to be, I guess, where they decide to go with Rojas is going to determine the bench because obviously you have Stubbs as the backup uh, catcher. Whit Merrifield, who they traded for, who can play a little outfield, can play infield, utility guy, and he's had a monster spring. Obviously, he's not going anywhere. And Mundo Sosa is your, your your infield utility guy. He's not going anywhere. So ultimately, you got Jake Cave, Christian Pache, and Johan Rojas trying to um, in for like that last two spots, basically. Uh, and Cave and Pache do not know what to um, – like, they don't have options, so they got to figure out what they're going to do there. And, like, I don't know which way to go because Pache is good defensively, but sometimes I, I don't know. I, I don't know which way to go. Personally, I probably lean Pache. Um, and then I don't know what that – whether you try to trade Cave or, or what. So we're, we're going to know more about that spot. But this those three guys battling out for two spots is really the only question we have on this team. Um, and, again, I like Merrifield. I like Sosa. Stubbs, again, is your backup catcher. So whatever you get out of him is kind of a bonus. Uh, but 
then it comes down to, to Cave and Pache. And obviously, there's going to be guys coming up from the minors. Uh, but between those two, only one of them will be on this team. And I, I don't know. It, 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 a lot's going to be determined by it because I think if they send him down, then they're both going to be on the team. But then what do you do when you, you – you, I don't know. Uh, personally, I, I think – it's tough because you got to get off to. And I got to keep going back and forth on this. You have to get off to a good start. However, it like how good of a start? Like I, it depends because if the the rest of the lineup gets off to a slow start, and then you have your nine hole hitter hitting one seventy, that's not good. But if everybody else gets off to a hot start, you can kind of absorb that. Um, so it's it's definitely a risk reward type situation on what you want to do, um, and then ultimately, what do you do? Like, who do you have if you get rid of Jake Cave? Say, who do you have that can take that spot if you need a midseason or Christian Pache for that matter? Um, so glad that I don't have to make the decision that Dave Dombrowski does. Uh, but lineup wise, like I said, I think they're good. I mean, we're we're really micro analyzing and hyper focused on the whole Johan Rojas thing, but that's because there's no other questions top to bottom in that lineup uh, other than maybe uh, Marsh's name. Uh, Brandon Marsh, like, but he looks good. I mean, the first play of uh, spring training that he played, he had to make a run for. So I think he's good that way, uh, but we'll see. Um, Rotation-wise, I'm solid with the starting rotation. Wheeler, Nola, Ranger, Suarez. Is the, I'm saying is the bet. You're not going to find many top three in the rotations in the league better than that. Uh, Christopher Sanchez, I, I have high hopes for this year. Uh, I know he got roughed up in his last spring training outing, but he was coming off the flu that went through the team. Uh, I'm anxious to see Tawan Walker. Uh, they're playing tonight, actually. This is Thursday. They're playing tonight. Tawan Walker is on the mound. I want to see what he can do tonight, now that it's the second time around, to see if he's going to be ready or are they going to skip his his spot in the rotation for the beginning of the season. Um, that's the one question mark. But I think based on the way things happened last year and not being included in the or getting to pitch in the playoffs, I, I think he's going to come in with a chip on his shoulder. And, and I think as long as he's healthy – Again, like I like our top the, the top five in the starting rotation it is great. Uh, bullpen wise, it could be a strength, it could be a weakness. A lot like bullpen guys are like that, but uh, when you have Alvarado, Dominguez, Hoffman uh, as your big guys, then you have Strom and Soto, uh, Spencer Turnbull, who they just got, Junior Marte. I, I like it. The the key to this bullpen is going to be Orion Kirkery. And I know he's questionable now for the start of the season because he lost so much weight because he really got caught with that flu. Uh, but if he can come in, and I, I found it weird that I was hearing things, and, and I forget who was the interview uh, was, but last year like he had never pitched back-to-back -back days. So when they pitched him back-to-back -back days in the NLCS – that was – I don't know if that's on Dombrowski. I don't know if that's on Thompson or what. But that's really kind of what killed them, that second game he pitched last year. And he never done that. So hopefully they got his – get his condi conditioning back to where he needs to be. But again, I mean, I think lineup-wise – there, there's not many teams that, that are more talented than the Phillies. Obviously, you have the Dodgers, the Braves, but I think you, the Phillies are right there in the conversation with them, uh, especially in the National League. Um, so what about the intangibles, the things you can't see? I think the fact that they're focused, they, they're they ready. They're going into this with a World Series or bus mentality, and I love it. Uh, you have Nola and, Wheel Nola and Wheeler, I should say, with that new contract. So they're not necessarily going to be distracted by that. They're here for the rest of their careers. They're going to be content. Let them pitch. Um, that It says a lot because, I mean, look at what Trey Turner did, getting adjusted and things like that. And it, it's an adjustment. So you take away a distraction and let them focus on pitching. They're relatively healthy, knock on wood right now. And I think you couldn't have said that two years ago. You couldn't have said that last year. 
But you can say that this team is relatively healthy right now, knock on wood. And I think the high expectations, I think they are going to thrive in this because what's going to happen with from the high expectation is the crowd is going to be pumped all year. Like the crowd is going to be packed. This is going to be like 2007 to 2011 type vibes down at Citizens Bank Park every single night. And we saw and we've heard so many times players say that that crowd carries the team. So I'm not that concerned about that. Uh, but I think they're going to play, play up to expectation. I know some people are like, oh, well, if they do this. and, and this, No matter what happens this year, if they don't win a World Series, it's a disappointment. And the players feel that. I think the front office feels that. I think if you really break it down with most fans, we feel that way. I certainly feel that way. I, I feel like the last year was a complete letdown based on the way it ended. So everybody having those high expectations – I look, and if you, you saw the way they were at the end of the season, very business-like. And I think you're going to see that for most of the season. Like, I think they're going to, obviously, they like to have fun. That's part of the personality of this team. But they're going to be very, very business-like. And I, that's going to carry them through, I think, because they're going to have it, like, on the days that it's 90 degrees and humid and they don't feel like playing. They're going to have it that, no, we need to focus on the big prize. Um so I think all of that adds to the, the the lore of this team and maybe gets them an extra win or two or three or four. Uh, gets them up over the 90 win mark. Uh, it helps them compete with the Braves for the division. Mm-hmm. Um, so before I get into my pick, my three bold positions or predictions, Bohm is going to hit 30 home runs this year. I think he's going to have a breakout year. I was torn between whether to put Bohm on here or stop being an all-star but I think Bohm's going to hit 30 home runs this year. He's he's going to just put it all together. He knows his position. He's comfortable now. He's kind of playing for a contract at this point. So I, I like, I believe, and I, I should have looked this up. I believe I remember this is his last year before arbitration. So Bohm hits 30 home runs. It's bold prediction number one. Bold prediction number two might not be that bold, but Bryce Harper returns to the MVP form. He's healthy coming into the season for the most part. He's comfortable. He knows where he's playing. He's not battling a major injury or coming off Tommy John surgery or anything like that. He returns to his MVP form this year and helps carry this team to a few wins throughout the year. And when games they probably should have lost, he's going to put the team on its back, whether it's grand slams or making plays, whatever it is, Harper's going to return to MVP form. And I think of all of them, the one that's probably the least bold of any of these, Ranger Suarez is going to have an ace-like year. We're going to basically have three aces on this team. And I am very high. If you know, I love Ranger Suarez. I always said if they win the Ranger Suarez game in the playoffs, which they always did, he's a clutch pitcher. He's coming in healthy. He knows his role. I think you're going to see... An ace-like season from Ranger Suarez, possibly even an all-star game uh, appearance from uh, Ranger. But those are my three bold predictions. Alec Bohm hits 30 home runs. Bryce Harper returns to his MVP form. Ranger Suarez has an ace-like year. So what does it all mean? I told you, it's World Series or bust for me for this team. The division is a nice goal to have. I don't give a shit if they win the division or not. Sorry. I mean, it'd be nice to have the, the the blue, right? Are they the blue ones? Yeah, I think the, I forget, which, whatever. I think the blue ones are the division, the white ones were NL, and the red ones are championships, or maybe I have that backwards. Either way, it'd be nice to have that division banner. I'm not worried about that. Do I think they can battle with the Brave? Yeah, and I don't think it's going to be, the Braves are not running away with this division this year. I think the Mets you're going to see fall off. I think the Marlins are going to be tougher. I think the Marlin or the the uh, Nationals are going to be tougher. But I think the Phillies and Braves are going to battle each other all year for the division. Perfectly in the realm of possibility for the Phillies to take out the Braves for the division. I'm not predicting it. I'm saying it could happen. And I don't think it matters with this team and their mindset. It does not matter if they're a wild card team or a division. Would they like to 
to win the division? Absolutely, we all would. Um, so that's a goal, but not the end all be all. I told you the crowd's going to be pumped, and that's going to be huge. And because of this team's mindset, how the expectations, the crowd, it's going to be hard to beat them in the playoffs, and it's going to be hard to see them losing in the playoffs once they get there because of the swag they got back. Um, so truthfully, this might be a homer pick, but I, I gave you the reason because here, here's what's going to happen. Dodgers might not guess they're good, but they have a history sometimes of choking in the big games when they win 100 games. The Phillies have already, until the Braves prove that they can beat the Phillies in the playoffs, we're in their heads, okay? Um, so those are the two big, the Padres, we've proven they can beat them. Marlins, we've beaten them. Um, I mean, the Cardinals, we've beaten them. Uh, who else do you want to say? Milwaukee's taking a step back. Uh, I'm missing a big – oh, Arizona. I mean, again, I think we're, we're coming into that mindset. If we play Arizona in a series, it's payback, redemption. Um, so I, I, I just – and again, call it a homer pick if you want. Uh, again, I'm here for entertainment. I probably am going to put – or not probably. I'm going to put money – my money where my mouth is and pick the fills to win it. But it's a homer pick. And in the World Series, they play an old, familiar foe, get a little bit of revenge from the 1983 World Series, taking the Phillies to beat the Orioles in six games in the World Series this year, get the revenge for 1983, put the champagne on ice, we'll be dancing on our own again. I don't even care if they're using that song or not. Let's do it. But again, it, it's a homer pick, absolutely. But the truth of the matter is, once they get into the playoffs, which I it's going to take a monumental collapse for them not to get in the playoffs. Anything can happen. And I think with uh, Ranger Suarez having uh, a breakout season, I think uh, you have these guys healthy and get the lineup cohesion. I look for Trey Turner to bounce back. I think Stott and Bohm both have breakout years too. Um, and I think they're going to have to pick up the slack for guys like JT who are getting older. Guys like Schwarber, who sometimes can go in a slump. Castiano, Astian, Castianos, who can sometimes go in a slump. Um, the, the only thing that's going to downfall this team is injuries, specifically in the bullpen or anywhere in the pitching staff for that matter. And if they all go cold like they did last year. But, again, I, I, could they win the division? Sure. Could they not go to the World Series? Absolutely. But I'm saying if they make the playoffs – they're going to be hard to beat because they're going to be so focused. And I think they've learned from their mistakes from last year because they had that focus and they lost it. And they'll never admit this. I know I thought it was a foregone conclusion once they went up 3-2 to two and were coming back to Philly that they were going back to the World Series. I think with all of the hype about how hard it was to play at Citizens Bank Park, not one player on that team will ever admit this to you publicly. But we heard the Eagles say certain things, and like it gives you like a glimpse inside to the mindset of an athlete. There's no doubt in my mind they thought it was a foregone conclusion too. And then it was like the the oh shit moment where it was too too little, too late, and they couldn't get out of it. Just like what happened with the Eagles. So that's just my thought. Again, tell me what you think. Call the Back to the Future voice and text line 267-495-8531. Let me know what you think. Again, one podcast, one-stop shop. So make sure you're tuning in every day to get your daily Philly sports history lesson. The coming attractions, we're finishing up Women's History Month in the next couple weeks. April, we're going to do a little unfinished business. Take a look at teams that had the expectations and just could not meet the expectations. So uh, teams like maybe the 88 Eagles or the 91 Eagles or different teams like that, the 2011 Phillies, for example. So teams like that with unfinished business, that's what we're going to do. Coming down the horizon, I'll give you a little preview of what's happening. The Philly Sports Best Nickname Tournament. I'm compiling names and and the selection committee is deep in thought right now so stay tuned for that and again best way to do that follow me on social media youtube tiktok twitter jimbo underscore mont instagram at philly jimbo hit me up on facebook but let me know am i crazy am i drinking the red kool-aid uh what are your predictions for the philly season call the back to the future text and voice line 267-495-8531 to let me know what you're thinking as always, thank you for joining in. 
Go have yourselves a week, a day, whenever you're listening to me or whenever you're going to see me again. But just remember, and this has been This Day in Philly Sports History, the Phillies season preview. My name is Jim Montgomery, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.